Beyonce. Effective immediately. You're going to love this. I'll be sure to send you a copy as soon as I'm finished. What are you doing in my office? Oh, I, I can see how you would be confused with your picture plastered everywhere, so let me clear it up for you. Fusion is my company. That makes this my office. Don't let my door hit you on the way out. You crashed this company's computers. You practically drove Fusion into bankruptcy. So as far as I'm concerned, you have given up all rights to call this company yours. You know what's so funny is you profess your love for Greenlee, but it's so obvious you don't respect her. If you did, you wouldn't keep showing up here trying to interfere in her life. A life that you saved. I bet you never let her forget that, huh? Right. Greenlee is not getting married to me out of some mistaken sense of obligation. She's trying to move on with her life. Why can't you just let her be happy? Go play the White Knight somewhere else. Greenlee doesn't need rescuing. Okay, if you think this is a game, Hayward, you're the one who's going to need rescuing. I may have been gone for a year, but that doesn't mean I've given up my rights to anything. I'm taking back what's mine, whether you like it or not. That's what you think. You did everything you possibly could to destroy Fusion. I'd rather see Fusion go under than have you be any part of it. I see. Well, if it weren't for me, Fusion wouldn't exist. <laughs> have you been sniffing the samples? Kendall and I created this company with zero help from you. Greenlee, I gave you your start in this industry. I hired you at Enchantment. I taught you everything about color palette and corporate politics and you took what you learned and you co-created fusion and when fusion faltered i'm the one who brought it back from the brink so as far as i can see you should be thanking me not feel threatened by me especially since i only stepped in at kendall's insistence <laughs> and we all know you and your daughter are quite the team both of you sleeping with ryan in one short year both Kendall and Ryan thought they had lost you. They were both mourning their loss of you. They turned to each other for comfort in their grief. Convenient excuse. What's yours? Me you sure as hell weren't grieving a loss when you made a play for Ryan. Unless, of course, it was the loss of your pride. You know, you are so busy lashing out that you do not see the facts. Ryan and Kendall are long over. Ryan and I are too. Very noble of you to step aside after I came back. You know what, just for your information, Ryan and I broke up before we even knew you were alive. Colby, I thought you went to bed. Hm. Hoping is more like it. That way, you and Scott can stop pretending you're writing a report together and really get down to business. A, a quickie. Right here, on the couch. You have a very active imagination. If your father comes home, tell him I went upstairs to take a bath. Uh, yeah, tell him yourself. Because I'm spending the night at Karina's. Dr. Burke, what are you doing here? I came as soon as I got your message. What message? The one you left with my secretary. She was very concerned, paged me right away. Wait, I, I didn't call Elkhaven. Your secretary must be mistaken. I, I never spoke to her. When was the last time you slept? Excuse me? You look exhausted. Perhaps you forgot you made the phone. What? No, I'm, I am exhausted because I've been up working all night. I haven't had the chance for a break, let alone to make a phone call. It's late. You're tired. Why don't we talk about this in the morning? I don't, I don't, I don't need to talk. I'm fine. I'm fine. My marriage won't be, though, if my husband comes in and sees you here pushing for therapy that I don't need. So if you'll excuse me, I have some work to finish. Call me if you change your mind. Still up. 
Listen, I looked over the report. The numbers that you quoted, they didn't include the last quarter. They... No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Again, anybody could have made the same mistake. It's a report. I feel like everything in my life is falling apart. You seem surprised that Ryan didn't mention when we broke up. Much less try to defend himself when you attacked him for moving on. But it doesn't surprise me because that's the kind of person Ryan is. More concerned with what's best for others than himself. I don't need you to tell me who Ryan is. He proved it while I was gone, showing his concern between the sheets. Oh, that's it. I mean, I have had it. We have all been trying to celebrate your miraculous return. Oh! Even I have tried to overlook our past problems and your current tantrums. Tantrums I learned from your inspirational teachings and enchantment? Miracle or not, I cannot, will not stand here and, and, and hear you badmouth this decent man, Ryan, who for God knows why loves you more than anything. I just can't believe that I encouraged him to fight for you. Because you don't deserve him. You could never make him happy. And you can? You have convinced both Ryan and Jackson that you are this delicate little flower who needs protecting. But the truth is, you are just too spiteful to die. Erica, you know, Greenlee's been through hell for the past year. Does she really need you attacking her? Greenlee knows very well why I said what I did, and I'm not going to stand here and defend myself. But you know what? This really has served as a very helpful reminder as to where your priorities lie and why things have never worked out between us. We... Can we talk about this in the morning? I don't think so. Our breakfast date is off. You... Are you all right? I am now. The worst part is that David might actually get away with this because he has Angie exactly where he wants her. You know what? I say the, the way to do this, the way to stop him is to take a page out of his book. You get it? Any ideas? I got one. But I'm going to need your help to pull it off. Dr. Hubbard, may have you tell me about the wedding? I knew you'd try to stop me. Well, that's a safe assumption, given the fact you're about to marry someone you don't love. Think what you want. I'm marrying David. Oh. Tomorrow. Oh, come on. This is insane. I mean, do you really expect me to be supportive of you marrying a man who kept the fact that you were alive a secret for a year? <laughs> no more than I would support whatever's going on between you and Erica. I have to hand it to her. She wasted no time. Broke up with Ryan, moved on to breakfast with you. Oh, look, did you and Ryan get enough of a chance to talk about all this? He told me what he thought I wanted to hear, but it doesn't change anything. Penny, I know you're hurt, but marrying David Hayward is not going to make the pain go away. If anything, I promise you it's going to make it worse. I didn't come for a lecture. Wait. How'd you know I'd be here? I didn't know you'd be here. So you came looking for Erica. Uh, we were going to have some dinner. Oh, my God, this just keeps getting worse. How many times does that woman have to break your heart before you learn? Can we drop the subject, please? Erica took everything that mattered to me. This won't be over until she gets what's coming to her.